It might not be your time to be a guardian angel, but it could be your time to be a guardian ad litem. What's it all about? You'll find out coming up next on Caroline People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at HTC's Carolina Forest Branch location. We're focused on the local guardian ad litem program and we're visiting with its circuit coordinator, Sam Hodges. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Greg. Thank How you are for you? coming in this morning. That's a firm a handshake early. at 7 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's waking me up if I'm not awake yet. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. It's a real opportunity, and this is old hat to you. You actually know this area pretty well. You've been traveling, I, I think you said uh, earlier this morning, grew up in Conway. I did. Well, no, I was born in Conway. Oh, good. It's Excuse Myrtle me. That's Beach right. Myrtle Beach. Hospital. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But I, like um, Jay, who was on your show earlier, have, was born and raised in Myrtle Beach. So, yes, yes. Life. Jay was with us yesterday yeah. and actually mentioned your name yesterday, saying that uh, we'd really get a lot out of having you in this morning. And of course, did you know Jay growing up? You know, if I did, I don't remember him. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, God, Jay, I hope you're not watching now. I know. Sorry, now. Jay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, no, I don't remember uh -huh, him. Uh-huh. Well, he remembers you, so that's good. Yeah, you must have been a popular girl then. Yeah. Danger. Yeah, not going to touch that. Not going to touch that. No, no. Of course, the Guardian Ad Litem program has been around uh, quite a while. The Guardian program started in 1984 mm -hmm. in South Carolina. Okay. So it's still relatively new compared to some other things, mm -hmm. but it started in 84 with a few pilot counties, Horry County included, and then spread throughout the state. Of course, so we I said, have... Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I said you were the circuit coordinator. You said that's right. Horry and... And Georgetown. And when it kicked off in 84, was it Horry and Georgetown or was it just Horry? You know, I can't answer okay. that. Okay, sure. Excuse me. That's right. Yeah, but it has been know. at least in Horry County since 84. Absolutely. Good, good. And it's and expanded throughout the state. It has. Every county has an office, and then the 16 circuits have a circuit coordinator. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Based out of Columbia. Right. Okay. And there, there's clearly a need right now, and obviously part of the reason I'm getting you in is the opportunity to talk about volunteer opportunities with the program and how folks would go about becoming a volunteer. But uh, just for folks who may not be familiar with what exactly that means. There's a little Latin in there, that ad litem. <laughs> but what is a guardian ad litem? A guardian ad litem is somebody that advocates for abused and neglected children. Okay. Most of the time they're taken, the children are out of the home. There are some occasions where the children are still in the home uh, where a safety plan is initiated and the guardian could be involved with that. But that's not as often as the other. Mm -hmm. So there are some instances where a volunteer is representing children in the home, even I mean, if they're, they they remain in the home right. while there are some accusations of uh, abuse or they neglect. set up a safety plan. DSS sets up a safety plan with them, and they have to abide by those rules for them mm -hmm. to be able to stay in the home. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for the most part, the normal setting is the children are out of the home in a foster home. Okay, and this would be children what ages? Zero to eighteen. Zero to eighteen. They take babies right out of the hospital that are addicted to cocaine. Mmm, boy, Sam. Mmm, and they get them in some type of home environment or a foster right, home. Right, a foster house. home. Are there ever instances where uh, a child is living outside of a foster home but living outside of their own parents' home and is still being represented or is it almost always in a foster? They have to be in DSS custody or okay. DSS has to be involved. Mm-hmm. That is Department of Social Services. Okay, sure. So for viewers who aren't familiar with how DSS works, they have to get those children in a foster home and not in someone else's home because they're still under the care of their parents. If DSS has custody, they have to place them in a foster home. Sometimes they're relative placements, mm -hmm. but most of the time the children are in foster homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a serious need there. And volunteers, are, are they oftentimes skilled in some level of legal... Uh, uh, wherewithal, or is there any special qualification to become a volunteer? There are absolutely none other than being 21, right. being able to pass a background check, being able to pass the central registry check for child abuse and neglect, okay. um, and going through the training. Is and that right? And just have to care. Mm -hmm. You have to care about children. 
and just caring about children. Mm, boy, when you talk about those early ages, you know, to think about a very early age where the child may not even understand what's going on and True. the level of neg neglect or abuse versus a young teenager, or an eight or nine year old who's recognizing something serious is happening. And I think it probably is worse on them because most of the foster parents that we have that take in the babies that are addicted to drugs are trained to handle those kind of things. So, mm. and the babies being young, they're not going to remember part of this going on. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it is easier if there is such a thing right. for the babies versus the teenagers. Mm -hmm. Sam, if a viewer needs to get off to work now or get family off to school or get out, uh, get out of the house, what's a good number? for someone to call to learn more about the uh, Ori and Georgetown County Guardian Ad Litem program? Uh, the number would be 248-7374. Okay, 248-7374. Mm -hmm. For our viewers in the PD and or even Southeast North Carolina, if they had interest and want to learn more about it, they could still give you a call, but you would redirect them to folks in their area. Yes, I would. There are get Guardian programs in each of the circuits. You said the 16 circuits right. statewide. So the PD has probably one or two circuits there. Uh, I'm Maybe not sure three. how the circuits okay. are divided, yeah, sure. but I know they've got at least two. Right, right. So. Spread out in those five or six counties that we serve. And obviously there's a real need. Um, guardian ad litem services are not only needed in Orion Georgetown, they're needed all over the state. They are. Mm. They really mm. are. We're at a point right now where I have about 50 guardians that are actively involved with cases. Mm -hmm. I need about 50 more to be able to take every child that comes into the system. Really? And that's our goal. Well, what, what is, how are those, the 50 children that currently don't have a uh, guardian, how are they being represented? They're being represented by an attorney guardian okay. that's appointed by the clerk of court. Mm -hmm. um, and attorneys, for the most part, and I say this because I am one too, um, don't have the time to put into a case that the lay guardian would because most of them are volunteering with different things but they've got time to go out spend the time with the child in the foster home um, most attorneys just don't have that kind of time so right. I'm sure they would appreciate it if I had enough guardians so oh, they would have to sure. take in. So they are court appointed? Yes they are. They are court appointed. Are those most oftentimes family court attorneys or are they just from Anything the bar? Anything if they're on the list. Right. Wow. And so we get real estate attorneys, we get a lot of anything. Is that right? And yeah. Some of the activities that they or any of the other volunteers that would step up to the plate would be required to, required to do, and then what are some of the things that they could even do that aren't necessarily required by the program? Um, as far as training? It's as far as being involved being with, the, with the, when you said that the attorneys don't have time, oh. oftentimes, versus some okay. of the volunteers might have time, what are some of the things that they would be doing that they're required to do and are some of the things they can do above and beyond that? They absolutely have to see the child once a month. Once a month? Minimum. Okay, sure. And so we prefer that they talk to the foster parents, meet with the parents and determine what's going on. In some cases there are medical doctors to meet with, schools, different people that they go out and talk to the counselors and the school nurses and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some of the representation needs that the children have? How, how does the uh, how do the guardians actually represent the children? Well, they represent the wishes of the children or their best interest. Okay. Okay. Um, the guardians do have an attorney representing them in court. So when I talk about representing their best interest, they are, but they do it through their attorney because they can't just speak in court. Right. I mean, the guardian um, items cannot speak in right. court. Right. Right. Um, so they're just they're speaking for the best interest of the child. Mm -hmm. um, that could be. They need a psychological evaluation. They need certain medical evaluations. Um, a lot of them come in and need counseling. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that the guardian would find out that they could recommend to either the Department of Social Services or put in a recommendation for their court report. Okay, sure. Because they're all required to do a court report. Mm -hmm. and the guardians could put in a lot more time. I mean, yes. They could be more involved. You've seen, I guess, guardians that get really active. But they don't work on more than one case at a time? They can have up to three. Okay. Um, I hope that's going to get a little bit larger, but right now it's three cases that mm -hmm. they can have. Uh, that's the national standard mm -hmm. by National mm -hmm. CASA, so mm -hmm. they don't want them to go over that because they don't feel like they can really devote the time that they need. And they would still have to create three court reports for those, their three Absolutely. attorneys, three separate attorneys. And I guess attorneys rarely would, would handle more than 
three cases, if that many either? I think they get eight appointments a year. Is it? Okay. So mm -hmm. it's spread out, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Right. Because right. I'm not on that appointment list anymore. So. Mm -hmm. You said you'd been the earlier this morning. You said you'd been the attorney for the program before becoming the coordinator, circuit coordinator. Right. What exactly does that mean? I was. Every guardian has an attorney. Every lay guardian has mm -hmm. an attorney, and so I was their attorney under a contract basis with. Um, getting money from the state. And I represented them, so when we went into court, I told the judge what the guardian wanted or didn't want, and I presented the court report to the judge. Mm -hmm. Very important. So, yes. And in cases, we did have several trials, and in those cases, maybe the guardian had to testify. Mm -hmm. So again, the basic, the basic steps are uh, DSS finds out about abuse and neglect happening in a home. Or a police officer. Or a police officer, okay, but someone... Uh, right in an authoritative position finds out about it, they recommend the, the child being removed from the home, Right. step in and make that happen, and then they go into a foster home. Right, most of the time. Or into a, a DSS oversees homes, or do they have? They license foster homes. Okay. They do, right. and then some, in some cases they can place with relatives mm -hmm. to keep the child from having to be so traumatized by moving to a totally new environment. Right, and for a viewer, I know this is ABCs, but for a viewer who may not be familiar with a foster home, how is that set up? That is parents who are adults who serve as parents, uh, or what, what, you got it. Is it just that simple? <laughs> it is. But can they serve for multiple children or just for? Uh... They're licensed according to how much room they have in their house. Okay. And they're also licensed by the Department of Social Services. Okay. Okay. So. And, and foster parents oftentimes are able to bring children in even if they have their own children under the roof. They're able to, yes. to, uh, to bring them all under one roof or if they have no children. Right. Right. Depending right. upon the size of the house and what kind of bed space they have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to pry too much, but is that something they're paid for? Or is that something yes, they're okay? They are. Sure. So it's a type of occupation, kind of. I mean, I obviously, out of love. Uh, they don't of, make enough money to make right. So principally out of love, they <laughs> right. love children and really care about children. But there is something to help offset the, the food or otherwise a there little is. something. Right. 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 Yeah, again, that's what I said. I don't want to pry too much, but I'm trying to think uh, how that would open up. Are there ever needs for foster parents? There are always needs for foster parents as well. Good. But unfortunately, you can't be a guardian and a foster parent. Of course, no. And as much as I talk about guardians, I will mention foster parents, but I can't. Right. Um, I need guardians as bad as they need foster parents. Okay, <laughs> but if a viewer was interested in possibly being a foster parent, they could still call Absolutely. you and you will send them over to the appropriate uh, Absolutely. folks at DSS, and that would be the 248-7374 number. You said you yes. also have a website that a foundation supports, I think. Right. We have a foundation that was set up to support the guardian program in case there were things that the guardians needed for the children that we were unable to get otherwise, and so they've set up a foundation for that, and they provide training for the guardians as well. Okay. Um, that's South Carolina Heroes for Children dot org. Okay. Is South Carolina written out? It's just S C. Okay. S C Heroes with an E right. for Children dot org. S C Heroes with an E for Children dot org. That's mm -hmm. critical. And obviously, again, picking up the phone, even if they picked up the phone right now at seven fifteen, or pick a pick, and they could leave a message if they you're can. not in there. Obviously, you're with us right now. You're yeah. not going to be there. But two four eight. 7374. Of course, your responsibilities as circuit coordinator, I think you said, are both Ori, this mm -hmm. geographically largest county in the state, and the fourth right. largest county, Georgetown County. So you're covering a pretty That's big uh, territory there. Sandy. It is. We have a coordinator in Georgetown that I work with. Okay. So she handles the day to day activities down there. Right. But I'm down there to see her and just provide support. and. I'm down there to do training occasionally. Is there a as need well. in Georgetown County as well, or is it principally ORE? Actually, not. They really? have more guardians wow. than they need for the Why? children. Why down is there. that? You know what? I can't tell you. Huh. The guardians um, or the Department of Social Services down there, their caseload is so much lower, and they only have court once a month. We're in court every Thursday. Is that right? And on Mondays for emergency hearings. Wow. So, um, do emergency hearings happen often, Sam? Every Monday. 